Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, California Weather Watch. Today's July 25th, and let's take a look at the visible satellite imagery here. We're going to start towards yesterday morning. You can see some of that monsoon moisture moving across the area, and look at the thunderstorm activity across the Sierra Nevada there, across the Peninsula ranges, and we even kick off a couple thunderstorms here across the transverse range. Look at that. That's probably not too far from the grapevine right there in the eastern portions. High desert areas getting some thunderstorm action as well. Arizona, Nevada, Utah. It is that time of the year, and as we scroll through the evening hours, you can see the sun set thunderstorms continue across nevada portions of arizona and look at the fire the park fire there you know pretty intense fire activity out there produced quite a bit of smoke and we're going to take a look at that here in a moment as well but if we scroll on into it this morning, we're going to kick off some more thunderstorm activity again. But you can also see already this morning that intense fire signal there here on the GOES-18 satellite imagery. Taking a look at the park fire, you know, it's 46,000 acres here. And that was as of four hours ago. It's been active for almost a day now. And that is right about here. You can see just north of Chico, California, and off to the south and east of Red Bluff, north of Sacramento. So if we take a look at the high resolution rapid refresh, this is the eight meter above ground smoke density. So this is giving us uh, kind of a look at what is forecast for the smoke today. And you can kind of see it moving off to the north and then off to the north and east, eventually off to the east as we go through the evening hours coming up here. So hopefully they're able to get a bit of a handle on this fire here, producing quite a bit of smoke. A couple other fires there across some of central and southern California also. Looking at the probability of thunder today, you can see Reno is here, it's Carson City, and a much lesser chance of anything getting back out over the valley areas here. You can see Mammoth Lakes are at 41%, Bishop at 35%, for example. Taking a look at Hanford, and you can see uh, Tioga Pass, Yosemite Valley here, you know, thunderstorm activity. Here we go again for today. Probably not as extensive as what we got yesterday. And you can see rainfall chances for today. Big Bear Lake, you see Palm Springs is going to be kind of in that thunderstorm threat today. Also, San Diego National Weather Service put this out last night. And here we go with uh, excessive heat warnings. But we are going to go through a bit of a cool down here. I mean, relatively speaking, of course, a lot of areas are still going to be quite warm. But you can see we have heat advisories and excessive heat warnings still in place. we got some red flag warnings also for some dry and windy conditions. That does include some of Northern California up into Northern Nevada and on into Oregon. Thunderstorm outlook here. So you can see it does clip Carson City, Bridgeport, Mammoth Lakes. And yeah, so that's what we're going to be doing again today. Probably not as a, ex the extent won't be as much coverage as what was going on yesterday, however. But also National Weather Service Reno calling uh, attention to the critical fire conditions that will be out there. Wind gusts to 40 miles per hour, very low relative humidities, potential fire growth from lightning holdovers. And this is a five-day outlook here for Las Vegas. Check it out. A little bit of cooling trend here as we go on into the weekend and the early portion of the next week. And we might start bouncing back after that. We'll take a look at that here in a moment. I was issued this morning. Here we go for uh, Phoenix. And Phoenix National Weather Service office does cover portions of California. That's why I do show it a lot of the times. But you can see we do have this risk here in the darker green for some gusty outflow winds. 58 miles per hour is where that severe threshold is. You can see the, the thunderstorm uh, risk here you know, across Palm Springs, for example. And it may be coming up a little bit further north than that but again mainly between 4 and 8 p.m uh, here we go uh, fun weather station here uh, build its own forecast for you lightning detection system with it stores all the data for you in the cloud and it's a very attractive unit as well click on that link down below if you want to save 10 percent off on that Taking a look here at Stockton. So uh, again, like a lot of California, well above average so far this year. You can see only one, two, three, four, five, maybe six days that the highs topped, the highs topped out below 100 degrees. No measurable precipitation just yet. We had a trace back on the 20th there, but very warm conditions. I mean, look at that 105, 109, and 108 the last three days. But a cool down is coming up here. So stick with me as we go through the video. Elevated fire risk for Northeast California does exist, and this is for day two. Now here we go. So I want to point this out. We have this upper level low, and I had a couple of questions asking, like, you know, why is this not bringing a frontal system with it? Why aren't we getting precipitation across the state? And the dynamics and the temperature contrast uh, to break it down basically is just not there uh, to bring a strong storm at this time of year. So while the heights are kind of abnormally low, they're still not enough to bring any kind of meaningful system with them. And I'll show you more on that here in a moment. But you can kind of see at least we're not dealing with a very strong high pressure system here as we go on in towards the mid portion of the following week.
Now, if we take a look at 850 millibars, and you can kind of see the temperatures there at 5,000 feet at that time where that, you know, the upper level heights were showing the lowest reading there across some of central California. You can see you can't even really pick it up at, at 850 millibars or 5,000 feet. You're not talking about a very cold upper level low. And if we look at 10,000 feet, you can kind of see a little bit of it here, but still not very dynamic. And if you look at 18,000 feet, you can hardly pick it up as well. A little bit of cold air moving through here, but the gradient is just not that strong this time of year. The northern hemisphere warms up our mid-latitude cyclones are just not quite as strong and you can kind of get that by looking at the uh, global circulation of the northern hemisphere you can kind of see it here it really barely registers on that so that why that's why this system is not that dynamic and as you can see these what we what i call polar lobes anyway are kind of moving around the northern hemisphere here and during the summer months you know these are not very strong there's not a lot of cold air up across the northern hemisphere as these pinwheel around mid-latitude cyclones are much weaker however that starts to change as we get into the fall and the winter months the direct rays of the sun drop back down below the equator and we start to cool things down dramatically we get a better temperature contrast and much stronger mid-latitude cyclones that affect you know places like the pacific northwest and down through california at times so uh, taking a look here again it, it, i'm going to scroll through this and you can see the afternoon thunderstorms here again today a little bit for Friday afternoon, and then we go on in through Saturday afternoon. Not, not much showing up there. A little bit of a break from thunderstorm activity, but you'll notice you don't get any precipitation or any frontal system with that weak upper level low swinging through the area. But it will cool things down a bit. We'll take a look at those temperatures starting right now. Taking a look at the daily two meter max temperature, this is for today, July 25th here, Thursday. And you can see as we go through tomorrow, a little cool down. There we go. Saturday, check it out. Some areas only getting into the mid 80s here around Sacramento. And then we go Sunday, Monday, slow gradual warming back up but definitely cooler than we have been those huge lofty temperatures are going to take a break for a bit and then potentially we start to ramp things back up again as we go through the following end of the following week here towards the next weekend but you know we'll, we'll revisit that on a daily basis to see just when that's going to happen here's a six to ten day you can see this near normal kind of shrinking here along the west coast as they kind of see that warm-up coming extended forecast so Enjoy the cool down while it's here and you can see the below normal signal here across the center portion of the country moving back into California a little bit there. This is updated today. Mm -hmm. You can see they have it. Ex they have extended that moderate drought a little bit. I mean, what is this? Maybe two, three percent of the state that it covers right now. So most of the state is doing pretty well, but there is uh, some abnormally dry that kind of got extended down across some of the Cascades, Sierra Nevada, it includes Lake Tahoe as well. So taking a look here at the fire risk today, the W means, uh, go over here and scroll over that, it's dry and windy conditions. And of course, we got the park fire out there and any lightning holdovers could really be flaring up under these conditions here. So uh, be prepared for that if you're out and about across the region. Not too extreme fire danger here across much of the other areas, but there still is some moderate here. You can see down some of the coastal ranges, plus the east slopes of those coastal ranges. But anyway, yeah, um, you know, if you're a storm chaser here, the thunderstorm activity here has been fun over the last few days. We're gonna do a little bit of that again today but probably not as great as an extent of the thunderstorm activity. But again, watch out for that park fire out there as well. But anyway, hope you guys are liking these videos. Click like and subscribe. We'll do this all again tomorrow, and I will talk to you guys then.